Nice feet together. Cutting up. Punji. Let's go ahead and take a knee. Take a seat. So we just finished up some punch related principle. And I know a lot of that was not classical kind of Taekwondo or Karate style punching. We really kind of focused more on boxing skills, right? So I want to give you guys some material that was different, that's kind of fresh. So this section for about the next hour or so is going to be probably something you're more used to, kicking, right? So kicking in Taekwondo is about arguably 70% of it. Um, when I first started Taekwondo in the 60s, kicking was probably about 60% of it. Punching was about 30% of it, and 10% of it was self-defense and ground skills. Um, a lot of the ground skills and self-defense stuff in classical Taekwondo, I, I don't see it in a lot of the schools anymore. I, I think because it's just been you know, outpaced by the guys who do ground fighting, Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, those sorts of styles. So if you want a better understanding of ground fighting, that's certainly a better place to go than to sign up for Taekwondo and think you're gonna learn ground skills. Probably not. You wanna learn kicking? Taekwondo is the way to go. So what is the advantage of a kick? Long to reach distance, what else? Power, okay. Structurally, is my foot probably stronger than my hand? Right, yeah, unless you know, you've been doing make a lot of training or punching knuckles forever. Your hands can get very powerful. But bottom line, the foot is stronger. You walk on your legs all day, so the legs are stronger. The structure is stronger. The reach is longer. So we're talking about reach and power. In combat, in a war setting, I have to be able to reach out and touch my enemy. I need to be able to touch them in such a fashion that they know they were touched. Everybody got it? Right? Meaning, we're dropping rounds on heads. We want them to know that they were hit. Uh, dropping rounds on heads. I always am reminded of Jay on, on David's fifth on exam. He threw this beautiful axe kick, and David looked up, and I thought, oh, God, Dave, don't look up. And uh, you boom, right? So, Hey, Ben is easel, dude. He rocked you. Thank God you controlled it. You have found it. We'd still be digging him out of the basement. <laughs> so bottom line is, our kicks are meant for power and for reach. But in order to have power and reach, what's the most important aspect of the kick? Stability. Balance. Balance, right? If you can't stand on one foot with some form of stability, because I am a bipedal person, right? I stand on two feet. When I walk, I'm constantly varying between one foot and the other foot. I have to have that stability of my station in order to be able to deliver power. That power is coming through my body, through my hips, into my kick. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay? So one of the drills that we're going to do is just a simple swing drill. It's done from what we used to call a, in Japanese, zenkutsu dachi, means front stance. Changurashi dachi. All these Korean names as well, right? I'm a bilingual martial arts, trilingual, right? English, Japanese, and Korean. But bottom line is all we're doing is from here, swinging your leg, trying to think about not coming up on the heel. I'm not going for height. I'm just swing and down, swing and down, swing and down. Bringing my hands up, just nice and relaxed, swinging through that range of motion, Think about my purchase point, which is my left foot. Everybody got it? Now, if we're doing this right next to somebody, is this smart? No. No. So spread yourselves out. Don't hit people with your swing kicks. Go ahead and stand up. Spread yourselves out. Katie, son, I'm going to let you work with the kids. Guys, go ahead and spread yourselves out. Come on forward, guys. This is, this is lots of room on the mat. So, yeah, I'll demonstrate one more time. Our hands are up. Swing and back. Swing. And back. Be able to do both sides from here. Swing and back. Same thing. Ready? Each. B. Han. Chi. Go. Rut. Reach. Touch. Switch sides. Switch feet. Same thing. Eight on this side. Ready? Han up. pump a little bit like with just a basic swing kick. So now what I want us to do is to work out the hips. We're going to change the trajectory. So just stand there. On my swing kick, I'm coming straight, right? So now I want to angle it through the hips and come across, okay? We call this an opening position. For my Aikido guys, 
if hands are in the way, and I am trying to open hands, this makes sense from an Aikido standpoint, yes? I have to open up, make contact in, transition, in order to execute a control. Aikido lives somewhere in between kicks and punches. Right? It's that point of contact. If you give me a finger, a hand, or something, thank you. Okay? If you move back and you keep punching, it's very difficult for uh, even a very good Aikidoist to affect an Aikido throw when someone is throwing at full speed. Throw at full speed. Okay, pretty fast. Throw at full speed. Boom! Now all of a sudden I can move in and I can do Aikido technique. What? He threw the punch. What did I do? I moved out of the way. I struck. That's the atemme. What is that? You can say pain. My knee right here is just screaming. Knee in the bolts. Knee in the drum. Knee in the Right there. But that is his brain. Right? I'm interrupting his thought process. This easily flows to an arm lock or some type of movement that is going to flow into an Aikido locking skill. I'm taking it from a teme, from percussion, to the next level, contact. Point of contact becomes point of control. That is transition control. Right? That's what it's each place off. Do something to create a movement. Where does both of his hands go? <laughs> and where did his head go? All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the demands. How does this look for a defensive posture? <laughs> is my head forward? Yes, sir. Not good, right? <laughs> we call that shaping and positioning. I want to shape a person in a position that gives me an advantage in the fight. Shape them into a position that gives me an advantage in the fight. On the first movement, I threw a back fist to the side of his head, knowing he was going to move and shift his body in that direction. His arm came up to block that. I knew that as well. Because I want to play pool. I want to take my next shot, okay, in my head while I'm delivering the first shot. I got to be a step ahead of him in this martial chest game. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes, okay, changing the angularity, just coming across here. <laughs> All right, let's give that a try back and forth. Just inside crescent kicks, really, all we're doing. Just move the hands out of the way. If I were here, itch. Boom. Right? Just move the hands out of the way. How do you like my position? <laughs> yeah, you love it. I don't like it. Ready? Ice. Ready? Ice. Ready? Ice. I can do nothing with that, Jay. Let's do it. Ice. Okay, change up. Use your other leg. Ready? Ice. Inside to outside. Ice. That's outside. Ice. Okay, guys, great. Everybody relax. You know, in, in Yoshikan Aikido, we often get this criticism, or, or just, no, not even a criticism, but comments, because we have this stance. And I see people all the time, what kind of stance is that? Why do you stand like that? That's really odd. It's our heritage. If I draw a sword, and now the sword is in my hand, now all of a sudden it makes sense, right? That you can see that the sword is there. So I said, well, that's not a very effective stance. If I put a 32-inch razor-sharp sword in my hand with the kasaki sticking in your throat and all of the intent is towards you, the stance will make sense, right? <laughs> we have different stances and different postures and positions based upon what it is that we are doing. You need to recognize that. If, some, if someone is setting up shallow stance, knees forward, they're getting ready to shoot to take you down. Read their position, right? What do you think we do in the military when we're looking at enemy positions and where they are on a battlefield? We are analyzing the position on the battlefield to determine their strengths and weaknesses, to figure out what our avenues of approach are so that we attack on their weakest point. That's martial arts at a division level. Guess what I'm doing when he gets in his fighting posture? Right? Okay, weight's mostly on the back leg. He's got his hand down. He has an opening here. He's got this leg light so he can kick. He's thinking about a counter punch. Pretty close. Okay. Be able to read the position. Does that make sense? When you get to the level where you can look at someone and tell them what they're doing before they do it, that's pretty cool. I've done that many times at tournaments. He's like, how do you know what I'm doing? I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't tell you. You're getting ready to throw a skip kick. I mean, boy, that's really <laughs> hard to figure out, right? That's right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pick partners. 
Pick partners. Everybody got partners? Do you have a partner? And um, this is called a valley drill or an alley drill. Uh, Mark's on. Where's Mark? Mark? Okay. All I want to do is give Mark this idea of a channel that he is just going to do. We call this a Shizen Tai, natural stance position. I have to be able to throw kicks from this position, right? If he says something to me in the street and I go, Ooh, right, all of a sudden, have I given away intel? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, this guy thinks he knows something. I got fly chain cane here, right? <laughs> he already knows that I know something from stance and position. A lot of times you can read people. I walked into a dojo in Nashville. I'd never met this gentleman before in my life. I walked in because of a, a drill weekend in the National Guard. I go to karate classes. I went to a karate school. I sat down in this Wadu dojo and I'm watching. And the guy stopped me, he looked at me. Kept teaching class, he stopped me, he looked at me. He said, sir, can I help you? I said, oh no sir, I'm just here to watch. He goes, huh? Taught for a little bit more. Stopped, looked at me again. Have you ever done any martial arts before? I said, yes, a little. He turned immediately to his students. He says, that means he's done it a lot. <laughs> that was a very intuitive instructor who could tell by the way I walked in, sat down, respectfully, quiet, just watching the class. You can tell by the way people move if they have a skill set, if you are intuitive enough and you're awake and not somewhere in the internet <laughs> with your cell phone, yeah? All right, so the alley kick is just this. Stand normal, and he's gonna throw a kick between my hands. That's it, throw a kick again. I wanna think about retraction because I get hit in transition. So when he throws a kick, I wanna to try to clap. And if I, oh, I got a piece of it that time. If I can catch it, then he's not retracting, right? He's kicking low. One thing here, kick, and back down. Notice where my hands went, and what did I assume immediately at the end of it? I'm now in a bladed position, aren't I? She's in time, kick. Now all of a sudden, I'm ready to do stuff to this guy that he's not gonna like. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Yes, sir. That's what you're doing with your partner. Just playing, just playing. Please don't kick somebody in the groin. <laughs> All right, if you do, you get to clean up whatever comes out of those, okay? All right, so back and forth. Okay. So, and you can make this like a game, Kaylee, where they're just trying to catch the kick, right? Not trying to block it. All I'm doing is seeing them. Do the same like that, do the same like now throw your snap kick. I caught it. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Stand still. Now throw your snap kick. That's kind of slowly. Okay. There. Why are you having trouble standing normal? Because you've never done a kick like this before. Right? Everyone sets up into this stance. And if in a street environment your first response is to set into a stance, then I already know you're doing a training movement. I'm slow. Nice, nice. And the clap should be just straight in. Nice. Pretty good. Yummy! Make sure you do both legs. Make sure you do both legs. Okay, continue. I taught you the idea of an axe kick, right? We're coming straight in. I taught you the idea of an inside to outside crescent kick, and I've taught you snap kick. Three iterations of the same type of kick in, what was that, five minutes? So there's three kicks. Bruce Lee has a wonderful story, and he talks about a kick is a kick and a punch is a punch. Until you begin to train. And then as you train, 
you start to structure and you start to formulate your style and you have to do it that way and it's very hard for you to get out of the way that you're doing it because that's the way you were taught to do something, right? Eventually, the way that you were taught to do something, maybe you realize, gee, I can do it a lot of different ways. So that instead of a crescent kick, a hook kick, an axe kick, a round kick, a skip side kick, a this kick, a jumping willy whistle winny <laughs> kick, right? Whatever kind of kicks there are, all of a sudden you have all this derivation at black belt through about third down level, all these different types of kicks. And somewhere around fourth or fifth down level, typically you would start to go, a kick is a kick, and a punch is a punch. So don't get wrapped up so much in what type of kick it is, it's just a kick, okay? How you deliver it, how you execute it can be different, but it's just a kick. You have to deal with it the same way. You either get out of the way, you move in and snuff it, or you shift it out of the way. That's really the three classic ways of dealing with the kick. Or you take the shot, right? Does that sound silly? No. Okay, in kickboxing, I did that a couple of times. I fought a guy, uh, Bob Thunder Thurman, for a round ass kick, and I took it. Boom! So that I could get that hook punch. So they knew it was coming, and there was no way I was going to be able to block it and it just hit, and when it hit, I rolled because I'd been kicked hard before. I knew I could survive the kick, so I rolled with that strike. Boom. Okay? Bob somebody. I'm not sure if it's Bob Thunder or not, but Bob somebody else a long time ago. But understand, you can also take a hit to deliver a strike if you're pretty confident that your strike is going to be the definitive strike. This is my problem with point fighting, because in a street environment, there are no people that are going to jump out of the cars, run up, stop, pull you to a park, and go point. Right? Points are wonderful because it means that you're making contact, you're getting close, you're executing technique that could be effective in a street environment. Okay, it's good. Continuous point, maybe that's even a little more realistic because now people just add up points and don't stop. Yeah? Now maybe in your dojo you start continuous point, but add a little contact in. Oh, now you're starting to take some hits and understand how to deal with that pain. If you ever had a liver shot? and you've had to fight through a liver shot where you're trying to suck air in and you're just covering until you can catch your breath and start to breathe again while that other person is pommeling you and you're still on your feet, then you have the proper grit that it takes in order to be a good fighter. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I, the taste of teeth. You ever had that? The dentin? Yeah, there's a wonderful smell. I've had that a few times. Or wow. I've also had the experience of like going military combative. I kicked one of my buddies, Sergeant Wilson. Brian's huge. You'll meet him if you go to uh, the sushi place this evening. And I threw a kick at Brian. Woo! And Brian's six, 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 seven. Yeah, at that time he was 365. And the kick went, and he went, hey. <laughs> <laughs> when someone can look at you and go, hey, what does that do to your oversight? Oh, yeah, that psychological advantage. I'll oh, kick you. It didn't do anything, right? So understand that where you kick someone is also important too, right? So targeting and trajectory and accuracy. All right, so the next kick. What we're going to work on now are going to be from a stance posture, from a back stance, classical penate style. On my initial movement, I like to think about knee strikes. If I am the my, not my eye, but my space, Mark and I are moving around, we close and I'm here, I may want to drive that knee in for the strike if I need to, right? That's a snap kick, isn't it? Yep. Isn't that the same motion that I set up for a snap kick, but now I'm doing a, a hisawaza, right? Uh, yeah, this is just a little short. Oh, <laughs> it works with short people. We <laughs> Sorry, inside running joke. Uh, so I'm here, come through the goal post, kick. I like to step down and out. I did that kick very slowly. Okay, this here, nice and slow, kick, down and out. I'm kicking right in his hands, why? Because he's uncomfortable with me kicking it. But I want him to feel he can block it, right? If I throw it at speed, he can't block it. His hands didn't move, where was my foot? Here, where's my mistake? Where's my weight displacement? Forward. Where are my hands? Where's my opening? Everywhere. Everywhere, right? So I have to take the soldiers with me when I am kicking this guy, kick down. Now I can do stuff to this guy because I've moved in and I've done things that allow me to, well, I just killed you, sorry. <laughs> that makes sense? Everybody stand up, back leg, snap, kick. Back and forth with each other. One person does it a few times, 
Other person does it a few times. We are not hitting each other. Just this idea of, if I want to hit Mike in his belt level, I hit belt level. I'm aiming for his patch. I aim for his patch. If I'm kicking him in the chin, I kick him in the chin. Yeah? Okay. All right, give it a try. Yeah, I And one of the best things that you can teach black belts to your students is the idea of automaticity to the center line. When I target, I'm always striking to their center, most of the time, right? Sometimes if somebody's throwing a kick, I'll punch the kick, I'll elbow strike the kick itself. Yeah, you can do all that, but that's at a high level. The basic things that you're gonna to want to be able to do in a street environment, when you're in an adrenalized state, fine motor coordination goes down. You do not rise to your highest level of training, you fall to your lowest level of preparedness. So if I'm an eighth degree black belt in Taekwondo, which I am, and I haven't trained in Taekwondo in six years because I'm an eighth degree black belt, I don't need to train anymore, and I get attacked in the street, what's gonna happen to me? I'm gonna get beat up, right? Never ride on your rank. Your rank is meaningless if you're not maintaining the skill sets that it took you to get there, okay? Again, back to rule one, fitness. And it ain't fitness pizza in your mouth, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna try to fitness entire pizza in my belly. No, I'm talking about fitness, like the real ability to go that combat minute, okay? A combat minute, one minute, I'll say, that's easy. Yeah, I learned one thing in the military. I, I took this course called Air Assault School. It's like two weeks long. What can they do to you in two weeks? A lot, okay? <laughs> I volunteer for Sears School. It's three oh. weeks long. How hard could that be? What could they do to me in three weeks? A lot, right? The bottom line is you can be miserable in, in five seconds. You can be miserable in two seconds. Your heart rate spikes. Your respiratory rate goes up. Adrenaline is secreted. Your fine motor movement. Everything, boom, you become tunnel vision. Part of martial art training is getting used to that adrenalized state. That's why we spar. Hard. Shugyo training that gets you close to that level. The military, the more you bleed in training, the less you bleed in combat. In the dojo, the more you sweat and frankly bleed in here a little bit, the less you're gonna sweat and bleed out there. Martial arts is not just about the fight. Martial arts is about personal development, it's about growth, discipline, understanding that that yellow belt can become a black belt. Maybe that high school diploma can be a bachelor's degree, a law degree, right? Life is that way, it's all about these achievements. So when we teach our students, start with a basic principle and around black belt levels where teachers should start to advance those principles. Center line of defense on bruises is groin, umbilicus, solar plexus, throat, face. That's my center line of attack. Everybody got it? What's his center line of defense? Same thing. All right, so how's that for a great principle, black belts? Guard your groin, guard your belly, guard your solar plexus, guard your throat, guard your face. How do I guard my abdominal section? Sit up, because you're probably gonna get hit in the abdomen. How do you guard your groin? Don't lead with it, okay? Have it turned away and back. Does that make sense? How do you guard your throat and head? 
have your head up, chin down, be behind the soldier. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now when you're doing these snap kicks, Bruce says fighting stance, I want to start to think about where is his center line that I'm trying to attack? What are the things that I have to worry about? I see activation here and here. Well, that's what you're thinking about punching me. Okay. All right. Bottom line is, how do I negate that? I have to think about where do I occupy my space? I am here. When he starts to throw his punch, shift offline. Now what am I doing? Drive, strike. Now all of a sudden, where's this hand? How many of you noticed the contact point here? Yeah, it's already set up for my next movement. What's this leg want to do? Take this back leg and just, yeah, look, it's right here. I don't have to tell them to do things, right? They're already there. And that's the one we want to get to, yeah? So now we're aiming at center line while we're targeting back leg snaps. Go ahead. Go ahead. partners working back and forth. Back leg snaps. Ready and go. So my shoulders, hips, everything is online as I move forward together. Right? Anytime I distort my position, I weaken the strength of the attack. Begin again. Body alignment. <laughs> That's pretty good. Look at how nice and straight up she is. That's really good. Turning my body <laughs> like I want to run away. Right? As I turn my body, the critics will say, I'm giving him what? I am, I'm giving him my back, sort of. But I'm also aligning the quadriceps, the glutes, structurally, positioning so that the angle of my strike is driving through my body and into him. I'm creating the appropriate vector from here, boom, to drive the kick into this guy. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I'm position one, boom, position two. Position one, boom, 
Position two. Position one. Boom. Position two. Every time. Kick. Down. Now I think. Kick. And up. And now I'm in for movements that I can do to Bruce. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. When I position, the knee wants to come up. Black belts, a puppy at a fire hydrant. <laughs> right? They lift their leg, and then I drive the heel into Bruce. Here. Boom! Drive him back. Boom! And away when I'm doing the technique. Does that make sense? Everybody up? Partner sidekick drills. One person is a target, the other person is kicking. Okay, you can make a little contact, okay. Start sideways? Start sideways. Yes. Yeah, very much. Yeah, match three was different. Okay. So what I see is you're leading with the foot. And I lift my leg here so that it's not in the frame. Boom! Then it's full body. Boom! The driver. Here. Boom! Driver. I can't I mean, that can be scared enough, but I was like, oh, I don't want to actually keep my That is that. Yeah. Push my box. Good. Side kicks for most people are a challenge. I get it. More pivot. It's okay. There's no dumb leg. Work with it more. It needs to be I'm Okay, I'll do a little. 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 They take it from the ground and the foot becomes the leading edge and it looks like this. That kind of motion is rather easy to block, right? My Taekwondo instructor, Jun Ri, would throw a sidekick and it looked like a piston, right? It, you know, you can go high, but the higher I go, the more the angulation, the reduction in power, the more I have to shift my weight slightly and start to distort my structure and my posture. When I distort structure and posture, what do I do for power? I lose it. What was one of the advantages of the kick? Power. Power. What was the other advantage? Distance. Reach, right? Distance, reach, timing, power. Why would I want to structurally throw the kick in such a way that I lose the power of the technique? Right? If I'm fighting so I'm down here to the knee, boom! That's like heat starting a Harley Davidson, right? Now I want to heat start the Harley, boom, at a higher level. Here, position one, boom, position two. I'm not, I'm touching him, I'm not kicking him. Here, boom, just try to drive it in, heel is first, kick. If I set, kick. Ever got the idea? Okay, back up, try it again. Back and forth, lead with the heel. If you're brand new and you don't get this, I totally understand.
So if we review what we've covered so far on just kicks, we've taught this idea of a stability kick, which is this swing and come through. Today that obviously that could be utilized as an ax kick on this right down, right? We talked about trajectory. What's trajectory? The angle of attack, right? If I start in this back position here, and it's coming up this what? Center line. Center line. Groin, umbilicus, solar plexus, throat, face. And I want to change the angularity of the kick. It's basically taking it off that line and coming through when I'm doing the technique. Then we talked about the back leg snap kick from position A here, kick, and I move in. Where are my hands? Do I have to teach them to do that? It's automatic. I want my hands up. But where did I move? I moved in, didn't I? I closed distance. My Aikido guys, I entered, right? His zone for power on kicks is about here. His zone for power on punches is about here. Where was I? I was here. Do you like me here? Okay, so I'm really close. Now, on the side kick, we talked about from she's in tie position, right? Where I'm standing in this position, and again, I want to think center line, boom, go side kick. If I can do right leg, even with hip replacement, I have to be able to, boom, do this leg as well. Train so that both legs are still functional. Does that make sense? If you have an injury, train through it. We are medicine 2.0 in this country. Sensei, what are you talking about? You get a problem, I give you a pill. How about this? Don't get the problem in the first place, so I don't have to give you the pill. What does that mean? <clears throat> Obesity. Lose weight. You're weak. Get strong. You're not flexible. Stretch. I'm stressed out. Meditate. Where did you do all those things? Okay. Does that make sense, right? So now we're going to change the side kick up. So that now we'll do it from an attack posture. We're going <clears throat> So again, he's just target. I'm talking about the person here, right? Hey, is there water around here? Uh, I don't know if there is. <laughs> if I'm going with my back leg, a back leg side kick is coming through. Notice what I did with my knee. I lift my knee into this pattern. Where are my hands staying? Ah, so now when I drive that kick, boom! I'm driving it into him. I touched him. I didn't follow through with the kick. Who wants to see me follow through? Bruce wants to see me follow. <laughs> so bottom line is have enough control when you're throwing the kick. I'm telling you, where are most of my kicks going? To his belly. Put your hands up. What's open? His belly. Why do I like to strike his belly? It's open. It's open because I want to shake this guy. Oh, thanks, you brought this head full. This is a wonderful thing that now I can do stuff with. Does that make sense? Shaping and positioning. I can kick him in the head. But God, guys, I'm on the 70 side of 60. I don't want to do that. I want to hit him with some power and authority so that when he goes, oh, and his kidneys and backbone are meeting each other, and he's starting to gain his breath again, and he starts to think in his head, maybe I screwed with the wrong old guy, right? That's what we want. At a certain level, I want my technique to be so effective that it's one encounter, one chance. Ichigo. If you're pushing me to the point where I'm going to throw a kick and hit you, I'm throwing that kick as if I need to kill you. Sensei, it's a terrible thing. How many of you guys have ever been in a fight for your life? How many of you guys have ever been in a fight on the playground? Okay, a lot more hands running. On the people who are in fights on the playground, if someone pushed you and you fell and smacked your head on a curb, 
and it broke your neck and you died, were you not in point of fact in a fight for your life? Did you not know it? You didn't at the time because you thought it's a playground fight. Nothing bad can happen from a playground fight. I beg to differ. If you're going to fight someone, then there's a certain number of rules of escalation and you need to have worked this out in your head beforehand so that you know what those rules are. Since a hard, you're a white-haired old guy and I don't like you. I'm not gonna fight Bruce over that. I'm gonna say you're probably right and I like you, Bruce. I'll do a little verbal Aikido on him, right? If he's pulling out a knife and he's threatening me with it, then I have to make the decision. Can you get in trouble with this? Yes, yes. In the news, there's a story right now that's playing out where a gentleman says his side of the story, other people say their side of the story, it goes to court. Again, if it's a life and death setting, I'd rather be judged by 12 people than carried by six, okay? If you're going to choose to fight, it is always a fight for your life. Got it? Okay, so Bruce is back up. With my back leg, I'm coming through, killing, driving the kick. I like to set up in this position, because where are his counters coming from? Throw the counter. Throw the counter. What's starting to happen to his floating ribs? <laughs> right? I'm creating, shaping, and positioning. Maybe I don't go to the upper body. Maybe as he's moving forward, I'm going to take that leg because he's put weight displacement there. Maybe I don't even want to do the side kick and I modify it so that I strike to the groin, okay? Which was the original version of a hook kick. Now the kicks are up in the air and the guys are flying through the air for 15 minutes. My opinions as a traditional martial artist of that stuff is it's utterly athletic and beautiful to watch. <laughs> Leave it at that, okay? We're on YouTube, I gotta be politically correct here. Uh, so bottom line is, if the technique doesn't have an effect, it should. When you do your kata, if you're just doing the movements, and you don't understand the bone cut, why the movements are being done the way they're being done, maybe your teacher hasn't taught you, maybe they don't know, find another teacher. Yeah? Do that. Everybody say that. Back leg side kicks at your target. Go ahead. Back leg side kicks all the way around. Make sure you pivot. Make sure we chamber the knee properly. Brown ass kicks are next. I don't you want to have. Pretty good. Hips to back. I need to reach. So we're trying to kick too much. So if I'm keeping with this guy, I'm here. I'm going to turn the hips kicking hard. all the way around. So now, I'm kicking hard. That's my target. But when I do that, I'm going to turn the hips to real reaching to be able to strike this guy. He wants to be able to do it. Does that make sense? Make sure we pivot and follow through. That's what I think. That's good. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed it. You should note that. That's what I'm trying. Then I'm used to stepping back. There you go. How do you know it was good? Keep moving back. Yeah. Much better. Much better. We're in this position. We're separate. Riding the camera. Really going in front, man. Right, you don't have the whole track. Yeah, I see exactly what you said. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, harder to do than yeah. Yeah. driving the entire kick. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
more control over the leg. Better, better. You see that? Not great, but better. Right, right. Now, we're not going to turn you into kickers in a one hour class. I get that. Where's the kicker? You get it? Okay, guys, everybody, I'm in. Go ahead and scooch back to the two by four and just have a seat. Don't give me a break. Scooch right out over this way, so. Because everybody's crowded down here. We have all the screws. So scooch down this way. Scooch down this way. All right, so the last of the kicks, then we'll finish up, would be the three basic kicks that I like to think about are snap kick, side kick, round kick. All those three, the one that I see students have the most trouble with is the side kick, right? So if we're Korean, we say uh, If we're uh, Japanese, we say uh, On these different types of kicks. The roundhouse kick, which is what we're going to focus on next, is really a snap kick turned sideways. Okay? Snap kick turned sideways. Round kick. Same thing, the round kick can be low. Or it can be to the body, but one of the things that I like to emphasize, and it was something that Master Ree always emphasized, was the idea of the power with the kick. If the reason you're doing kicks is to execute a strike that has true power, then that's a really important thing to make sure you focus on power. What I see become an emphasis, especially with younger students, is not so much the power in the kick, but the height of the kick. Okay? My, one of my best friends in the world, Bill Superfoot Wobbs. Bill loves to kick people in the face. Bill's 78 years old. Bill can kick you in the face at will right now. And he would smile as he did it, right? Because he garners joy from kicking you in the face, okay? It's, 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 that's what he does, okay? And that's fine. Okay, yeah, just make sure, yeah, Bill Wallace is not in this crew, okay? <laughs> so we are not Bill. We don't have that incredible flexibility and speed that he had and still has, right? Even Bill nowadays is really focusing on boxing more because of his hand skill. It is the power within the kick that gives you that advantage. Bill could throw incredibly powerful kicks, and they looked very relaxed in nature in the way that he did them and in structure in the way that he threw it. I'm not that guy. I trained from Jun Ree. Master Ree, when we were throwing power, it was because we were learning to break boards. That was our demonstration on tests that we could execute a kick with true power. You know, one board, two boards, three boards, four boards back in the day, solid with a snap kick, solid with a round kick, solid with a side kick, solid with a chop, solid with a punch. I tested in 1976 to my black belt. My first examination, I failed. Why did I fail? He said, my techniques were wonderful. My kata, my kyung was very good. Oh, they, my self-defense skills, very good. Why did I fail? On my sparring, yeah, Daily knows the story. I, you know all my stories. Uh, on the sparring, I, I, I broke Denny Durr. I still remember his name. I broke his ribs. I'm like 17. How important was that black belt to a 17-year-old kid who'd been training since he was done? Ultimate importance, right? To me, that I wanted that more than that high school diploma. This is my black belt. You're not going to take this away from me. And I threw a side kick, and that guy folded like a pretzel around the end of my foot. And all the air blew out of me. He's like, and dropped. And I thought, yeah. And then I looked at him, and I looked at Master E, and my next thought was, no. That's not the point of why I'm doing this. And I hurt him pretty bad. I broke a couple of his ribs. And he failed me on my exam. I had to go back in two or three months and take my showdown exam again. I got up. I did about five or ten movements. He stopped the test. He goes, do you understand? I said, yes, sir. He goes, you pass. So that was the lesson. The lesson was that you can show skill and you can show someone who's attacking you a little bit of maybe some mercy, right? You don't always have to take them out. I know I just got done saying that if you're going to fight, you fight to win, you fight hard. But at black belt level, you should also have a skill set and an ability that you can turn it up and you can turn it down. Okay? So power on the kicks. Be able to turn it up, turn it down. How many of you guys that were my partners during side kicks, did I touch you on your tummy when I threw the kick? Michael, did I hit you? I touched you? Yeah? Did I touch you? Scott, did I touch you? Mark, did I touch you? Bruce? Are you guys all okay? Uh, 
Did I hurt any of you? No, because I controlled the kick. That ability to be able to throw the kick and stop it there is a really important ability. Can I penetrate further? Oh, yes. Okay. Can I throw the kick and just try to impress someone to death? Sure. I'm not you do that. It's waste of motion. But that's the whole point of it. So on roundhouse kick, we have to engage our hips. On stack kick, when I'm coming through, my hips are engaging. On side kick, when I come through, it is my hips that are training on the engagement. When I think about snap kick, I'm really thinking about driving that knee into my opponent. When I think about side kick, I'm really thinking about leading with my hip. I align my glute, my quadriceps, two biggest muscle groups in my body. That is called a synergistic effect versus additive. Additive, one and one is two. I want synergism. One and one is 100, okay? With that crank, with that forward motion as I do the kick, I don't want to sink that power into that person if it's a realistic fight, and I want to drop them, okay? Why midsection? Look around at most Americans. We have not conditioned our midsection so much, okay? I'm not gonna say it's a soft target, okay? But it is a target, right? I'm just teasing. There you go, there you go. <laughs> so bottom line is, you know, we want to think about that conditioning aspect. Roundhouse kicking is exactly this idea of driving the knee into my target, yeah? Katie's song, come on. Let's watch Katie's round of kick. So she's in her fighting stance, and she's turning around and stick her head because she can. And go. Oh, nice. And go. <laughs> nice. And go. Yeah, that's a beautiful kick. She's turning her hips. You hear a little snap with it. Go ahead, Katie's on. Nice control. My hair's kind of fluttering <laughs> beautifully in the wind. It seems that look like Brad Pitt's. No, okay, don't see. Thank you. So, uh, so let me have Scott up here. So with Davis kicks, those are beautiful kicks, nice and high, nice power. Look how effortless. We're 18. Okay, we're going to show you the 66-year-old version of this kick. All right, so Scott's in this fighting stance. When I am throwing this kick, I want to think about. Everybody say this: backbone and kidneys. Because that's what I'm going for. When I stick that foot in his gut, I want it to go through his belly, and I want his kidneys kind of wrap around his backbone a little bit. Okay? I want to make that impact. <laughs> his face. <laughs> He's got this. Oh, my God. All right, he's in a sweating stance. I'm coming through. I'm driving my knee, right? Now, what has happened to my back foot? Turn. I have pivoted my back foot. If I leave my back foot here, and I'm trying to bring my knee here, how does this look? That's if we look at the structure of this, this is screwy, right? Because I'm leaving my butt, my hips are not turning. When we watch sumo, they are here, they come up, over, and turn. They're turning their hip, okay? Eizo todome. Ancient waves. That was one of the oldest styles of martial art in Japan. Was sumo. So it's exactly that idea of sumo when I'm coming through with that roundhouse kick. Where was my knee? It was past him. Did I touch you? Was it gentle? Right? <laughs> That's what I want. I struck here. Does that make sense, everybody? Nice. Let's turn it this way so they can see. So we are here in this position. When I'm coming through, boom! I'm coming down. Now I know this hand is there. I have to think, where do I occupy space? Same position, right? Same place so I can occupy and cover that space to prevent movement. That heel, I literally felt it. It was satisfying. Because I literally felt his little rib slide under my heel. Literally, right there. I could feel it with my heel. Develop that kind of sensitivity in your feet. To where your feet send you back a signal. <laughs> I can feel this real. Come on, just let us do it one time, right? But no, control the beast. Everybody up. Roundhouse skits. Let's give it a try. If you have bad roundhouse skits or have never done this before, grab a black belt. I have experts in roundhouse kicks, okay? Lots of them around here. Twiner. Mark, the guy in the skirt, believe it or not, has very good roundhouse kicks. Most guys in skirts can't kick very good. <laughs> I love going to Aikido seminars in a skirt because immediately they assume Aikido guy, he can't punch or kick. And I love the first 30 seconds when I'm throwing kicks at their head and firing punches at them in a really well-chambered manner and they go, 
Doesn't make any sense. But yes, it does, because all Aikido guys initially, pre-World War II, had good punching skills. Most of the first generation Aikidoka were karate guys, judo guys, jujitsu guys. Why we got away from punching and kicking? I have no clue. I don't, I have no clue. Even in the writings of Osensei, he talks about Atebe. Atebe is distraction. Needs to hit. We're supposed to do it, we do do it, but we've kind of not gotten as good at it because we like to lock people up and do joint locks and hear them squeal. Maybe that's it. All right, round ass kicks, go ahead. Okay. So, we to kick. Guys, can you help you guys over here? Stop the Nice. Nice. Good. I'm going to swap in the sky. I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to hold your back in. Okay. You're going to turn it to kick. See how I pulled you through? Now look at your kicks. Now I've got the structure that you're lined up. You feel more your hip was back here. So when I get legs, what have I done to the power? I've dampened it out, right? So when you roll the hips through, it creates more power. One more time. Round as go. Boom. Round as go. Boom. Good. Now that felt better, right? It's a lot more power. So when you're coming through, kind of unload it. Don't unload it. Oh, no, and I didn't. I still pulled. You didn't kill me. I got you to kill me. I didn't think you really wanted me to kill you. No, I, I don't mind. You're allowed, you're allowed to hit. We have pads. <laughs> See? Okay. But again, that's part of body. Body parting is really this idea of controlling your breath. I mean, you hit me right in the red basket. I should be able to take that. Okay. And if I can't, then I need to go back to the dojo and train more. Nice. Good. What's the power into? Watch it. Nice. Nice. That's it. Couple more minutes, then we're gonna kind of change up some things on the roundhouse kick. Good. Drive it through more. Keep your balance. You're falling out of the kick. Maintain your balance. Fall out of the kick, maintain your balance. Better. When we fall out of the kick, if you're throwing that kick at me, throw the kick. Right? So now you didn't fall out of balance. Why? Because I stuck my hand in front of your face. So now you're controlling your balance point. I like to call it step down and out of the technique of control fashion. Very nice. Alright guys, y'all man. Everybody take a knee. So again, round us kick, side kick, side kick, we've worked on these all day. Now let's go back to round us kick Bruce. Bruce is in his fighting posture. So when we're throwing round us kicks, I can think about when I'm throwing the kick, if I'm aiming like from here and coming through, I can go high. You know, we can kick up high if we wish. What I want us to start now doing is a, to adopt sort of rolling around kick over, even in this fashion with the leg, okay? So now I'm not just pivoting with the back foot, but I'm also rolling my leg over. Where I want to strike would be from here, down, onto the leg. That starts to turn this part of this front leg. So I'm striking this structural component. I, I did that easy and I'm probably still stunned. I'm sorry. So we're trying to unload on the front leg and when I do this, one, I want to step out and guess what? Two. I'm just working this kick. One, two. starting to think about how am I working my way around this guy. Does that make sense? When I'm striking to the inside aspect, I can change the angle. Let's go knee, locks his leg out. 
from knee step over strike. Now all of a sudden I'm really starting to do things to this leg. On the step over strike, one, two, three, four. Yeah? Play with that. Please don't injure each other. Go ahead. <laughs> Low leg strikes with a roundhouse kick. Okay, where does this come from? They say Moy? Muay Thai. Thai, okay. Although we do this in Taekwondo too. And I'm sure Karate as well. Nice. Roll your knee over a little bit more and think about coming down. There. Jay throws the kick at my leg when we're here, bang! It turns my body position in such a way that now when he strikes into this one for a secondary, boom! Look at my body position. Right. He's really taking me down, working me to the ground, and when he does that step on leg, he's pinning me in position. Right? Okay. <laughs> it's percussion, guys, right? You know? I mean, it's just so effective. Yeah, I know. It, it, it really is. I know peace and harmony, I get it, but this is not peaceful and harmonious. Was you here for David's This is destruction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. First man. Wham! Yeah. And David goes, boom, boom. Yeah. Man, if Jay's going to slow down and kick, he's going to throw that kick. If he's going to slow down and kick, boom, he's hitting my leg. And the more he's doing it inside and outside, the more he slows down my ability to reflexively hit and do stuff to counter this guy. Yeah. And, and we were talking about that during the past. It's like, your dad, that was David's big skill. Kicks. And just put some whole flag. But why wouldn't you do that? What's David known for? He's a kicker. Take away his kicks. An aggressive person who's all in your face. What do you know of that person? They're aggressive, they're in your face. Punch him in the throat. Take that aggression. Now all of a sudden you've interrupted that thought process. And now instead of being sheep, you're a sheep dog. And that wolf just realized, oh, this guy's got teeth. That's what we want to do. So would you fight David Duffy's skill? No, no, this is yeah, the same thing. When you lose a fight, you lose a fight. I can't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi right, guys, you me. Okay, so everybody scoot back on the two by four. Everybody spread themselves out. So if people can move over onto the carpet if they need to, so that everybody is just in one line, scoot this way, scoot this way, scoot this way. I would be remiss in my duties if we didn't try two additional kicks, but you can do all these kicks from this position. So we're gonna do skipping and then we will do a spinning kick, okay? And then that will finish up our kicking classes. And then the next session after a five minute break will be Aikido or option B, if you guys wish, I can give you 30 minutes to go get something to eat, but we need to try to stay on schedule because I'm done at four. So I want to give you guys as much, if you're not hungry and you just want to keep right on training, 
I'm fine with that, but I do know we got a little guy. Who gets hangry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there are places that you can go and grab something to eat, and then if you can be back, let's say we'll give you uh, what do you think? Can you do it in 30 to 40 minutes and be yes, back? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay, let's hit the skip kicks and we'll go. Okay, multiple ways to Jason. So Jenny and I have trained together decades. Jason is fighting stance. Okay, so Jenny's gonna throw a skipping snap kick. So he brought his back foot up to front and then front foot to kick. Perfectly good option. If I take that same procedure and now I apply that's a roundhouse kick. Back foot to front, front foot to kick. Roundhouse kick, right? Now side kick, if I bring back foot to front, roll hip, side kick, boom. Same exact procedure on the skip kicks. If we switch sides, same thing. Skipping snap, skipping round, skipping side, right? What am I doing? I'm staying just out of range and watching his movement, trying to understand how might I be able to get around that? What are some things that maybe I can do with his timing and his rhythm? It's not just me being, and the same thing. If I'm throwing kicks at Jay, he's studying my position, studying my timing. Looking at, okay, maybe the old guy's a little faster than I thought. It's, it's that kind of thing where we want to look at each other. In the military, we call look at him like a hawk. When a hawk looks at you, what does a hawk do? Hawk eyes, and he's looking, and you're lunch. Oh, look at that. And that's the way I want you to think about your opponent. They are your lunch. You want to eat their lunch, okay? When you're thinking about technique, you want to watch them like an eagle, like a hawk. Watch for any tells. Maybe if I'm, if I'm, if I'm Bill Superfoot Wallace, maybe I do boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Bill does every time. How does he overcome that telegraph? 90 mile an hour kicks. Your brain can't neurologically process 90 miles an hour before he's hit you in the face. And then he's over here going, let's do it again, right? So that's the whole point. So these procedures, Jay and I will do them towards you guys. Jay, we're just in this position. So our first motion, hands are up, we're gonna step up. I like to call this cocking the pistol. My back leg is bent, my feet are in a T position. Hands are up, my knee comes up between the goal posts. So that when I'm here, up, kick, down. Same thing around kick, up, kick, down. Side kick, up, kick, down. Set in the same position each time, rather than at my side kick, I have to set from here, and then here, and then here. That's three individual movements before I throw the kick. How long do you hear? Boom! One movement. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Efficiency of movement, it's important. Snap kick, round kick, side kick, whatever you choose, any one of the three. Thanks, Jason. Hi, right, guys. Lighting posture, left side lead. Jay's going to help this side, I'll help this side. Hands are up. You don't have to have partners, you're just doing it. This person you see in the mirror, that's your biggest opponent. That's the person that's going to tell you to quit. This is too hard. I'm stiff and sore. I'll make you a promise. And you guys want to make a deal with me, okay? Everybody willing to make a deal with me? When I quit doing martial arts, you can, okay? Otherwise, you gotta keep training. Hands are up, unless I'm dead. <laughs> skip side, kick, skip side, skip, whatever. Where do you want? Ready? Eight. Ready? Eight. Front leg, jump. Ready? Eight. Back leg. Ready? Eight. Nice, good. Okay, so now guess what? We did them forward. Oh, no, 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 no. We did them forward. So now I'm here, James attacking, shift, kick. Now we want to move rear and throw kick forward. We got to open the door, close the door. Just like hands, when we move forward, I got to be able to move back. If I move forward with kick, I got to be able to move back and kick. Same thing, right? Ready? Eight. Ready? Eight. Ready? Eight. And relax. How many of you, for the first time, has it been that you actually moved backwards and threw a kick forward? Anybody, has everybody done this? Just a couple people have it, okay. If you have it, make sure that you can. Make sure that you have that ability to do that. 
All right, so the last technique, let's just focus on spin side kick. Mark's up. Sorry, I'm not supposed to pick on you. Bruce son. Thank you, sir. So Bruce is in his fighting posture. Besides, spin side kick. When we throw a spin side kick, I have a leading center. Leading centers are points that all of us have that we naturally lead with. All right? Tell me if you've ever seen this guy walking down the main street of Abingdon. What's his leading center? Yeah. How about this guy? You ever seen this guy? What's his leading center? Yeah, boys. Hips no, no. Groin. <laughs> you ever seen this guy? Chest. All of us have a natural leading center. We need to become aware of what it is. I tend to be uh, lead with my face, okay? Which is probably okay for this old face. Right? Well, still good but for this are. young, <laughs> Michael, you already got your knee done. So for this young, handsome face, you know, we may want to think about our leading center as the weapon. Everybody say that. Leading center is the weapon. Weapon first. Have you ever heard that before? Bruce Lee, weapon first principle. If I'm throwing a spin side kick at Bruce, I want my foot to be coming around. My foot is the leading center. If I break this up into its component parts, I'm doing it so that we can learn structurally how to throw the kick. I would try to throw the kick like an explosion all at once. I'm here, boom, and the kick is done. Okay? That's what we want. That's our goal. But I'm talking to you specifically because I know you, you said you're relatively new. So what we want is when we're teaching students black belts, break it up into a fashion that gives them pieces that they can learn the technique from. Right? So piece number one on spinning kick is I want to change my stance. Notice what I've done. If you've got younger folks, tell them it's like, it's like disco, right? I'm old. All right, I'm old. So maybe it's not disco, but that's how I'm a dinosaur. I said disco in a seminar, Jay, write that down. I want to dance, I'm shifting this way. My body, as it shifts, I'm lifting this leg up and I want to bring it straight back into Bruce. Now when I do those two component things at once, boom, I'm driving that kick into this guy. That makes sense, everybody. Spinning kick, what struck you? My heel. My heel. Did my heel enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Why did I walk out on this side? Because I had to pull the kick. A spinning kick is difficult to pull, so I walk it off. Otherwise, if I throw it without pulling, it's coming straight through, and that creates this shaping, which you just saw. What happened to his head? It's forward. I shaped him for whatever it is that I'm going to do. Everybody understand? Okay, let's go jump back in line. Everybody with me? Let's go left side first. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think, set, look over your shoulder. This leg is driving straight through, kick. Good. Let's try it again. Turn set by looking over your shoulder. You want to see me do it again? Please. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm here, and then my fighting posture, I set, right? That movement would be all really at once, because I'm giving you my back. So I have to lead with my foot. First, so I'm going to do it. That makes sense? Here. High five? <laughs> I won't ever hit you. I saw the that button. All right, hands are up. Okay, there, I'll hit you. <laughs> Spin sides, right? Fight! Pretty good. Now you're throwing a spinning wheel kick. Try the side kick. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Ready? Ice! The reason I say that is because your foot flew by his face. So it's about a quarter of an inch, three hairs fell off of his skull. And he shortened his life by an entire year. I hope you're happy. Right, let's give this a try again. Ready? Ice! Nice. Left hand. Ready? Ice! I had to move out of the way of that if she would have hit it. One more time. Ready? Ice! Yeah, I'm moving out of the way so she doesn't hit me. But that's a pretty good kick. Try one more time, guys. Spin kicks, hands up. Ready? Fight! Boom. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm throwing a lot of times. I like to When I throw, how do I finish? Hands are up, right? Because I'm an Aikido guy. Maybe I go from here, go to some kind of a finger lock or something like that, right? Sorry. One more time. Ready? Fight! 
Pretty good. good. Not great, but pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by not great is I see no Olympic Taekwondo in here yet, but we're going to get there. <laughs> One more time, right? Wait! Okay, guys, not bad. One more time. Yes. Good. If you haven't done one leg, do the other one. And on your own, guys, about four or five. Go ahead. Don't hit each other. Good kick. Keep going. Keep going. And nice, nice, nice. Okay, now everybody get a partner. Everybody get a partner. Spin kick to your partner, Scott. Yes, sir. So Scott and I are in a fighting stance. My throat. Kick. And I stop. Now Scott's turn. Kick. Go ahead, Scott. Kick. Go ahead, Scott. Kick. So he's got a hand between injury. I'm not going to make kick. But each one gets a chance to kick. The things that you want to think about are on spin kicks is what's your balance point when you come out of it? Right? That's what's going to be difficult for you. Okay? Balance points on spin kicks. I find that if I'm like I'm trying to control it and not hit Scott, that's when I tend to lose my balance points. If I'm here ripping, jam the kick, then my balance points spot on, right? Because that's the applicability of it. But I don't want to hit you. Okay, everybody with partners trying to touch the belly, not kill the belly. Okay, go ahead, back and forth. So it's fine. We just so again, you guys, the numbers got different. Kaylee, you got those guys? Okay. Roy, you got these guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I, but I will be uh, a rapper dinner afterwards because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Because you were leading away, yes. when you hit a solid structure, leading away, you can't leave it, you tip. Now, think, keep your body upright and think really seek it. Go. Better. Better. Ah, better. Still a little out of balance. This is not easy. You've got to practice this thing the bag, but you should have, boom, you come right down out of it, set into your position and stance without losing stability. Yeah? You guys are looking good over here. Yeah, buddy, not bad. I'm not saying I'm going to get the I'm not going to get I want to turn and look. And then I'm thinking, what's the shortest distance between two points? Is this the shortest distance, or is that straight on? Right? So when I'm here, turn, look, I got my hands up. Drive the kick straight. Okay. There you go. Yeah, it's very much what you used to call it a mule kick back in the day. The only difference is the foot position. Side kick. I'm doing the round. How are you doing, guys? Hi guys, you Everybody just one line, please. Who was spinning? Guys, right now I have one o'clock. I'll try to try be back by 1.35. And then when we get back, we will start with Aikido. Um, so joint locking, we'll do just a slight warm up with Aikido, and we will save swording for last. So if somebody has a, a, a desperate desire to do sword first, I'm, I'm perfectly flexible with chains. Oh, please, yeah, beat me with a stick. All right, guys, you ready to stand up? We will bow out Korean style since we've been focusing on Taekwondo skills. Try up, Kunji. Facing front, Master Ryu will be in the front. Try up, Kunji. Again, guys, uh, uh, you guys are dismissed. I'll see you at 1.35. It's right now 1 o'clock. Thanks, guys. Thank you.